Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen with a CitizenCon 2018 summary of the By Design presentation with Tony Zerovic. Going over game design systems for the universe and economy systems, NPCs, dynamic missions, law and order, prisons, bounty hunting, salvage, discovery and information gathering. It is probably one of the most informative pieces on Star Citizen game loops and systems that we've had in forever. The supply and demand economy. So they want a full systemic world, a dynamic logical environment with consistent rules, giving players the freedom to do what they want. And um, that's going to affect the dynamic universe. So players attacking miners or cargo transports, the system will then generate missions to sort of like attack pirates or defend the cargo ships or whatever, based on what those players or NPCs were doing. The prices of escorts should then rise and the value of commodities that were being intercepted by those pirates or whatever should also rise. They want to have a bit more of a custom layer technique when it comes to how they react to changes in the world as they don't want it to feel like formulaic to the players. So expect the world to maybe react a little differently in certain circumstances that might be similar. But there's also going to be a lot of handcrafted content and detailed areas here. Commodities, items, and ships are valued based on the type and quantity of materials required to make them, labor, production technology, factory capacity, and time, as well as supply and demand. So this will see dynamic pricing and reactions to economic changes. This also means that if stock items on a ship are massively overpriced due to a lack of materials um, to produce that item or one of those items or lots of those items, that in turn would then rise the cost of the ship. So the economic systems are going to be intuitive here. It's going to reward clever gameplay from players and understanding how sort of the markets work. It should help to mirror the real world economies with boom and bust cycles and players wanting to benefit the most want to look at potentially changing occupations or looking to focus on a particular area of their job role that they've sort of got that's more profitable than their current one. So like mining a particular mineral at a particular time or trying to increase efficiency or speculating on the market is entirely viable as well. So if you do decide to continue mining something that is currently low value, it might be worth not hiring as many escorts or hoarding the material in rented hangars or whatever until the price hopefully goes up. Maybe the price of a large copper field location would be very cheap at certain times if copper is super, super cheap on the market and worth buying for future exploitation. So there's various types of NPCs that they use to help simulate the economy and generate missions and all that sort of stuff. So the simulated NPCs are the heart of the background economy. They have maybe 10 to 20 million of these at once they sort of see and they're never directly seen but help simulate how the population of an area or planet or system is reacting to the supply of resources, what other non-player miners and cargo carriers are doing. Uh, they also help generate the missions of an area and what is available, what price is that available at. They are the labor forces for factories and might move jobs based on what else is happening on the system and that might affect other prices and that sort of stuff. So they are going to help determine what NPCs you see at particular landing zones and what jobs and roles they have and what they look like and what they're wearing and what they're doing, all that sort of stuff. Basically, it takes a cross section of what the population is on a landing zone or planet and then physicalizes that to what you'd see in an area representative of what's going on in that area in population terms. There's obviously still going to be those handcrafted NPCs. You're going to see those like hero mission givers and bartenders and um, some NPCs that have very specific jobs that are more regular or you see them uh, that they're sort of like always going to be there. But there's going to be a lot of uh, NPCs sort of like just in the crowd too. They also have NPCs and areas that represent probabilities, allowing them some more control on the economy and mission generation, spawning and encounters of particular areas. These are literally going to be zones of there is a chance of this happening or they might have just number values of that, that will keep on changing of there's 100 NPCs here that might respond to a, a repair service beacon at this price. Things like that. So there's also real NPCs. And as I talked about earlier, like the cross section of what you'd see in landing zones. Um, these NPCs walk around the world. They have schedules that you can follow and affect the physical world more. Uh, they might even be hard to distinguish from players. There's also virtual or spoof NPCs. 
So these are sort of like might generate missions and uh, in certain areas or exist in data. So you might see service beacons from a spoofed NPC. But again, these are not actually physicalized until certain conditions are met. So if you took one of these service beacons from a virtual NPC, then they might be more physicalized if it was sort of like pick them up or refuel and repair them or something like that. The dynamic mission system. So this is going to be debuting properly in 2019. Currently, mission content in game is static. They're not affected by the state of the economy. They're tied directly to certain locations and rewards are fixed. The dynamic mission system is directly linked to the economy in the new version, meaning missions will be generated and affected by that. Probability volumes, which will change based on where you are and what's happening in the rest of the system. It may, these may even take into account what ship you're in, uh, how many ships you're with, what cargo you have, your signature, your crime stat, that sort of stuff as well. They're going to help determine what you see and encounter, literally creating NPCs and ships physicalized in the server rather than just having them simulated. So you could have various levels of chance when it comes uh, to quantum traveling from one area to another of encountering a pirate or a cargo freighter or distress signal. And then this could vastly be different based on what area you're in and what's currently happening sort of like in those areas. It's going to change quite regularly. The benefits of this system is that it means that they don't have to waste resources on fully simulating NPCs that you're not interacting with, but you're also more likely to have something interesting happening during an encounter. The dynamic mission service. So... This serves as an intermediary between the game servers and the universe economy services. It queries the current state of the verse and then customizes mission content as appropriate. Missions are only offered at locations where there's an actual need for them or where the economy has determined there's a sort of like main reason to generate one. So rewards for those missions can be dictated via the economy and will change based on demand. The system and environment can pass information to the mission for much more intelligent customization of missions. So this gives us a huge amount of variety that actually makes sense. And they're going to sort of like have different cargoes for different ships, different escorts based on where they're going, where they're coming from. Is there previous battle damage on the ship? Um, uh, what is the reason of the ship going from here to here? That sort of stuff. That's all can be generated and can all be reasonable and justified by the system. The system and probabilities can be explained in this example, I suppose, if you have a refinery and an asteroid field nearby to each other, then you can expect a lot of miners traveling from one to the other, creating desire paths and um, for the probability system, you might say. So you can create an area of probability where you're more likely to see pirates or other cargo ships or other miners on that route. If a miner was heading to the field, its cargo bay is likely to be empty. When it's heading back from the field, it's likely to be full. And pirates would be more likely to target the full ones when they're going towards that refinery. Mission spoofing. So I sort of briefly talked about that earlier. Players need to be able to interact with reality, not in the immediate area. So this system queries probability volumes to ascertain type and frequency of communications. And so this will see service beacons being generated and taken by NPCs but NPCs won't exist in reality until the mission is taken by a player. There is focused NPC generation as well, so players with large bounties on their heads will attract NPC bounty hunters that will start tracking the player. But they're like ghost NPCs that sort of like are simulated but follow traces of a player in a system, and once they sort of like get close enough to you, then they'll arrive by quantum travel within a certain distance of you or whatever and uh, and that sort of stuff and then start hunting you properly and be physicalized also npcs answering your service beacon requests would work in a very similar manner if no one responds that's a player within a certain amount of time the system then goes how many npcs near you would be within range to answer that what's the price of your service beacon and um, is it reasonable for them to actually answer it and then you might get an npc coming to help you so an NPC would be real once it's accepted your mission is what I want to hammer home. But before that, it might just be entirely simulated and very lightweight. NPCs would be aware of a Banu merchant, for example, landing on a planet and might come there to shop. But that's going to be based on probabilities of how many NPCs are in that area. Do they need anything from you? Would they come to you? And then it sort of like works that out. Law and order stuff. So in the current system they have which is i suppose the old system now they have global criminal reputation which affects missions available wanted levels so that's um people coming to kill you are you currently a criminal that sort of stuff 
And there's also instant rewards for killing high-ranked criminals on the wanted scale. Criminals are detected within monitored zones via comma rays and crimes. Uh, and you can hack down your crime level at an appropriate terminal. So it's very simple, very basic, quite static. The new law system has every area having its own jurisdiction and laws, which can vary between systems, planets, and landing zones. So you might have certain items as narcotics in certain areas, but not in others. Something might be in a crime in one city, but not another. Each of these areas will have their own criminal databases, uh, that which will be accessible by law enforcement and bounty hunters within those appropriate jurisdictions. So you can have UBE coming after a player because they've broken a law in another system potentially, but private security or outlaw security might entirely ignore them because they haven't committed any crimes and they just don't care and what haven't committed any crimes that they see as crimes. They have thought about various crimes, so theft, manslaughter, murdering, smuggling, illegal mining, illicit cargo, false ID, quantum interdicting and dampening, and these are going to have various consequences such as fines, which may turn into bounties if not paid in time, Bounties are sort of varying levels, dead or alive, prison duration, banishment from certain areas potentially. Law enforcement will use various means to detect criminals and crimes. Scanning a ship or scanning a player in close proximity will then query the crime database. Scans would then return the ID of the ship owner or the player scanned and a list of any active bounties. If an active bounty is found, the NPC or bounty hunter is cleared to engage based on the terms of that bounty. Cargo can be scanned, but it's more time consuming. It reveals whether goods are illegal in the current jurisdiction. Upon verification that the cargo is illicit, a bounty is issued and the scanner is cleared to engage. Hidden and smuggled cargo will require even more time consuming scans and it might actually take some skill to do. All scans are detectable by the target, though some scans will be harder to detect than others based on items and the skill of the scanner. Encountering NPC law enforcement is, again, based on those probability volumes in the area you're in or um, because you're at a station or a landing zone that has a standing security force. Even if you are a criminal, they're not going to be immediately hostile to you. They have to be aware that you're a criminal first. So either they have to witness you do a crime or they have to scan you or something needs to scan you and like bleep you out. Beep, beep, beep. Uh, once you are detected, though, you'll have a GTA 5 style wanted rating where they may chase you. If you escape long enough, this w like rating will drop, but you're still a criminal. And you, um, if you get scanned again, then you may get chased again. So bear that in mind. Prisons will be a thing for committing crimes in lawful areas. Captured or killed players with a bounty may be deposited in a prison. Sentences will depend based on number and severity of offences. You can pay fines off for expedited releases, but um, they are also talking about missions in prison, doing manual labour, judicial sentence, meeting NPCs there. The system, like all others, will evolve. They may explore escaping prisons, but prisons are only really going to be a thing in lawful zones. And the idea there is uh, it's a way to incentivize players to not commit crimes in those safer areas. They are going to have security pads and physical keys and locks for ships and doors as well to help protect your stuff. They want a black market of stolen goods as well. So players with stolen ships will find it um, hard to live in lawful zones because if they get scanned, they're going to get chased. It goes beep, beep, beep. This is a criminal ship um, or stolen ship. They won't be able to land at lawful zones for rearming, repair, and all that sort of jazz, though they could get people to service them via service beacons. The lawless areas will allow for that, but they might be more expensive, for example. Eventually, NPC bounty hunters won't be based on probability volumes, and they'll actually track um, players properly across the entire systems, which will be pretty cool. There will be bounty hunter guilds that players can join. They may have requirements with reputation or you keeping up with a certain amount of bounties every so often, but that will give you access on the Moby Glass to the bounty hunting app with names of criminals, crimes and bounties, rewards, last known positions, what ships they were seen in, and it will be updated in real time via the jurisdiction's security networks. So um, anytime someone sees them, and that's another bounty hunter or that registers a scan someone it goes beep 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 it goes oh it's found this this dude and he's here and um, that will be updated into your little bounty hunter app you'll be able to engage any bounty on the list without scanning you can travel to their last known location as well also you're going to be able to track quantum trails 
So basically spending time to scan down the breadcrumbs of where the ship was going. This can be super useful to bounty hunters, but will be available to everyone. But the trails do decay, so you have to be relatively quick in doing it. Again, there will be virtual spoofed NPCs that have bounties out on them, and they will exist in reality when appropriate. So they're simulated until you get close to them, basically. But they would be simulated tripping alarms or being seen on in security and last known locations would be updated. And once you're in range with them, they become physicalized. Rewards for bounties will require proof of death at security offices or transportation of captured prisoner to a prison. They will replace captured players with proxy NPCs. Now that is a big bit of news. That's the current plan. Players will be immediately teleported to prison once they're captured. but for the bounty hunter, they will get a proxy NPC. That seems the most sensible way of doing it that I've heard so far. False ID kits are illegal in many areas to buy, but you can use them or, or uh, to sort of like trick facial scanners into giving bogus personal information. The chance of detection is um, still there, but it's going to be based on the quality of the like the illegal kit and the persistence and skill of the person scanning you as well. So if someone keeps on scanning you repeatedly, there's a chance that they might go, hang on, that's not the dude, that, that's an illegal ID kit. And they find out who you really are and you might be a big criminal, but you'd probably still have a criminal rating after being detected using a false ID kit. Salvage. So the mechanic is the polar opposite of repair with three distinct methods of salvage. Component extraction. So this could be like shield generators, weapons or other components. And you can cut these components out or bypass locks or otherwise remove them. Data extraction, which may require decryption and some uh, might have tamper proof devices. So you can only attempt to remove or get only a certain amount of data out of them before they are destroyed. Hull scraping as well, so that's using the salvage beam like a mining beam to strip the material off a hull. Um, you might be able to repair some components you salvage, so literally taking off a full component you might be able to repair that. It might be 100% in fully working condition, or it might be really damaged and you might have to repair it, or it might just be, again, a, just a, a trash piece of salvage. Also, you may be able to repair certain ships and make them flyable again rather than salvage them. You might be able to replace components, that sort of stuff. Discovery and locational information take a few different forms in the game. There's long range scanning or orbital scanning. So you're looking for like points of interest. There's incidental discovery, literally just finding something. Maybe you um, got pulled out of quantum travel by an asteroid that's in your way, or you're on a mission and you see something in the distance. Uh, there's also analysis and inspection. So this is checking out something in detail, prospecting for resources on land or verifying that something's there. Discovery ties into most other gameplay loops and mechanics. Salvagers, miners, they need things to salvage and mine. There are lots of different types of locational information as well, and that's going to affect the value of land or the, the value of that info based on what you find there. Um, doing more work on validating info in particular locations could give you a lot more value or make that piece of information entirely worthless if you find like a huge asteroid field, but then you find out there's nothing but worthless asteroids there. So it would have more value when you didn't know what was there than it would knowing that there's nothing of value there. So things that you might find are like wrecks and derelicts. What sort of condition are they in? Are they, are they operational? Are they repairable? Are they all pre-salvaged? Uh, asteroid fields or comets that are undiscovered might not be worth much until you see exactly what materials and resources are present there. Resource and floor analysis of a given parcel of land. I mean, there's going to be literally parcels of land that people want to build outposts on that sort of stuff and that's going to be based on what's actually there to be exploited and there's intrasystem wormholes that might be sellable for people that want to save time or for trade routes or lots of other reasons hidden bases like pirate bases criminal bases other players bases geysers and points of interest that might be great for scientists or tourists nebula and gas clouds for gas miners Information gathered is stored within a dedicated MobiGlass app and then can be shared with other players and orgs sold to information brokers or players. The value of the info collected will degrade over time, but you can revisit that location every so often to update that information and make it worth something again. Players can buy info from NPC brokers as well. These points of interest, asteroids and areas to discover are dynamically created, so they literally come into existence um, and as long as someone has retained knowledge of where they are, these areas or points of interest, then they won't despawn. So you might have to 
visit it every few days or every so often otherwise it will despawn but it's it's going to be a, over a long period of time uh, that these things exist and will continue to, to exist forever if constantly visited not eating or drinking for prolonged periods of time will start to affect your character it is very light survival mechanics they want to have in the game nothing too invasive but they still want you to go well i do need to eat i do need to drink every so often npc crews may be partially simulated as well in the future so you hiring a crew or fighting like a big capital ship they don't need to have all of those npcs running around actually operating those stations actually doing those tasks um, and like pathfinding and be physicalized that just seems madness so they can have lighter weight resource um, wise by simulating those npcs and then if a player is nearby then they actually physicalize them but they don't need to do that it's just a much better system resource wise and that was sort of it for the marathon of information that tony z gave us and it, I had to watch the presentation twice and my brain is broken. But please tell me what you think about the game design stuff that Tony Zorovic talked about down below. My radar have provided a new Anvil Valkyrie to give away. All you need to do is to be subscribed to my YouTube channel and then comment on any of my Star Citizen videos made during October. October. My radar is a mobile app for iOS and Android that provides up to the minute weather information in the US, Europe and Japan with service in Australia coming in the by the end of 2018. It allows Star Citizen players to view detailed maps of the moons in game as well. Yella, Selin and Daima. A new version will be released this month that includes new features including outpost markers and updated maps. Today's video is brought to you by F-Secure Total, premium cybersecurity for you and your devices. It includes safe and award-winning internet security suite, protecting you from ransomware viruses and while browsing the web. Free Dome VPN giving you net privacy, a way to access otherwise inaccessible content, while being secure and anonymous even on public Wi-Fi. Key, a password manager, allowing you to store your passwords securely and access them from any device. Total protects you and your device. You can try F-Secure Total, Internet Security and Privacy Suite free for 30 days. You can also use the code BoardGamer to get 20% off a subscription. Check out the links below for more information.